So we're here with CJ from Standard Solar and Brian Wagner, president of CPS America. We're here to talk about this. 250 600 volt converter. Why is this a big deal? Why did you ask for this product, CJ? Well, this is a big deal because there are very few, if any, products on the market that meet what I would say Standard Solar's new criteria for distributed generation, large-scale ground mount PV inverters. We want 1500 volt DC input. We want a standardized 600 volt output. We want to have a centralized wire box that allows us, or I guess CVS calls it the distributed wire box, so I can do a virtual central configuration of the inverters and distribute the uh, combiner boxes throughout the array. The reason why Standard Solar is interested in that is because we want to be able to have a load break rated DC disconnecting means between the PV modules and the inverter so that we have a way to safely service and manage the inverters and that we have that disconnecting means in place. Without it, if the strings are going straight to the inverter, you really have no way to isolate under load. So that really delivers a lot of value. And I also wanted that anti-PID function because I think it's a hidden or, or underrated form of degradation that can affect our projects. It doesn't affect the residential space because they're running at much lower DC voltages. It doesn't affect the utility scale space because they're using mostly negatively grounded central inverters. But in the large scale commercial DG space, we're doing 1500 volt DC transformerless inverters that are ungrounded on the system side. So therefore, PID is a risk. Most modules have claimed to make adjustments to avoid PID, but there's still a risk there. And if you don't have that function built in and you do see PID years down the road, it can be a significant cost to remedy, basically cost prohibitive. So I see this as an important, I guess, technical insurance solution to make sure that we have that built into our systems. So I'm curious, what is that working relationship? Important customer, asks for a major innovation in a significant product line. How did CPS react to that? What is that process like? Yeah, we get asked uh, that question a lot in terms of product development. Can you build this feature in um, you know, this power class? It really always depends, right? We first have to look at the market size. What is the market size that we uh, think this category could, could, or this new product could work in that category? When it's standard solar talking, we listen, and I think actually they drive us equally as we, you know, we drive projects. I think we do that together as a partner. We've worked together, um, you know, probably nearly a decade in terms of CPS. So it's like we've had ups, we've had downs, we've had good products, we've had challenging situations with products that we had to enhance, and uh, that's what we're excited about talking today. The 25600. What's interesting is. We don't follow the market. We tend to stay flexible and see what the market's doing, but we also want to be innovative and have our own, um, you know, our own version. So distributed wire box, separable wire box, that's our version. We call it standard uh, just traditional string. You know, that comes in the 25600. It's the centralized wire box, the centralized string, that really I think standard continued to push us for, frankly, we weren't sure we wanted to launch back when we launched the 10125, but because of that, we thought maybe 75% of our sales would be distributed. That's what we're known for, traditional string. And actually what we learned is in 125, half of the sales came in on the centralized version, thanks to CJ and the Standard Solar team, really. Now with the 250, we believe the number's gonna go the other way. We believe it's gonna be 75% centralized string. Even for larger projects, 20 megawatts, 50 megawatt plus projects, now can look at this application. So CJ, I'd love it if you would just explain a little bit about what we're seeing here with the enhanced DC wire box, the centralized wire box. Why are these important? Yeah, the reason we like the centralized wire box, it's not just so we can have a remotely located DC disconnect. It allows us to collect all of our DC strings, minimize the voltage drop by having a clean way to step up wire size from the MC4 connections and home runs coming from modules. I can go up to a number eight, but you can't really go past a number eight unless you do a splice. So you want to move that combiner box a little closer to the home runs so you're not worrying about a tremendous amount of voltage drop on a larger scale system. You know, once you get past three megawatts in size, it can be very unwieldy to have the distributed wire box where all the strings have to come back to the inverters, especially if you don't want to distribute the inverters throughout the array if you want to do the virtual central configuration. For us, we're focused on minimizing the voltage drop on the AC side because most of our projects have very high DC to AC ratios. So we're already taking a lot of clipping losses intentionally on our projects, and we want to take the voltage drop on the DC side because in essence it's free, because we're already going to clip it. 
if you take your losses after the overload loss, after the clipping, those are real losses. And so it's just less efficient of a system. So we're very focused on the centralized wire box uh, solution for a number of reasons, but that's an important design approach. And generally speaking, what is the scale project that you're developing? I would say the vast majority of our projects are three megawatt to 10 megawatt in scale, a lot of uh, distributed generation commercial and community solar ground mounts. Anything else you want to say about your wishes and how the company responded to that? Well, I would say that uh, we try to give constructive feedback about what we're interested in and what we want to all of the inverter partners that we work with. We have a different relationship with CPS than we have with most other manufacturers. Everybody's going to have a problem at some point. Nobody has been perfect. No inverter manufacturer in the industry that I know of can say they've never had a failure or never had a thermal event. The question is, how does your vendor respond when something does go wrong? What kind of support do you have? CPS gets their best A players on the phone on weekly calls with us. They engage the resources, we work together on finding solutions, and they support us through the project and through our issues, because they're going to happen eventually. Standard Solar wants to have a gigawatt of distributed generation solar online three years from now. If we're going to do that, we have to work with partners that we know are going to support us when failures happen, because failures will happen. And that's the difference between some manufacturers and uh, our desire to work with CPS. The service that CPS gives its customers is really what is a major differentiator in my experience talking to EPCs that work a lot with CPS. There's many great inverters in the market, but it's the combination of great technology and great service. Yeah, we say invest in our inverters, stay for our service. So I think that, you know, years ago we came up with, but really is true, we feel like if you make the investment in our technology, then you come online with our company and get to know us as people, because really you need people to help work with you. And we just created a process, a structure that allows our best people to work with the best people, the best customers, and, and listen, right? Actively listen to what their needs are. So the enhanced DC version really was one of the innovations that I think we as CPS wanted to explore. And Standard Solar was dealing with some challenges we had with, with products, earlier product. You know, by pushing the technology now with the enhanced version, um, basically you're taking your potential for thermal runaway, which everyone has an IGBT explosion or failure inside of the product. It's gotta be contained, but it takes the potential almost down to zero. You can't take anything down to zero, and it takes it and it minimi minimizes it um, due to that circuit interruption. So I think with, with this technology, I think in the future, you'll see a, all of CPS products continuing to innovate with the DC enhanced version.